So are you thinking about moving or relocating to Columbus, Ohio, and you wanna learn more about this incredible city? Well, I'm gonna be talking about seven hacks that is gonna save you a ton of money when relocating here. What's up everybody, this is Brad Winter and I'm a real estate agent right here in Columbus, Ohio. If this is the first time on the channel and you wanna learn what it's like to eat, live, work, play, and what some hacks are to save you money when moving here, make sure you tap that subscribe button and click that little bell so you get notifications every time I release a new video. Honestly, I get text messages, phone calls, emails, Instagram DMs, every single day from people that are moving or relocating to Columbus, Ohio, and I absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about moving or relocating here, make sure you give me a call, shoot me a text, send me a DM on Instagram, shoot me an email. However you need to get a hold of me, make sure you do so because I'm gonna have your back when moving to Columbus, Ohio. All right, everybody, let's get started. Today we're gonna talk about seven hacks to save you a ton of money when moving to this incredible city. Number one, furniture. This is always one of the biggest struggles that we all have when we're moving, whether it's to another city or even just from an apartment to the house where we're currently living. Furniture can be a daunting task on whether to keep it, get rid of it, save it, donate it, whatever that is, it's always a topic of conversation. So my recommendation is if it's something that's really important to you and you don't feel like you can live without or has some sort of maybe value or family meaning, keep it. If you can live without it, it's not worth moving it to a new city and seeing whether that piece of furniture is actually gonna fit in the house or not. So I always tell people, when you're moving, don't buy furniture, get into your apartment or your house or your condo or whatever your living space is gonna be, get a feel for it, take good measurements, and then you can go to the store and actually pick out what you truly want for your place. Number two, moving supplies. So everybody's always scrambling for boxes and tape and running the Home Depot and Lowe's and the local moving store to find all of these things. I know because I've done it myself. However, there are a few things that you can do to cut down on costs and a little bit of time when gathering supplies to move. So go to your local liquor store, grocery store, um, you can go to Costco, you can get boxes there. Uh, a lot of times they'll just give them to you if they have them laying around. If not, they're gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper to buy there than it would be at a local moving store or Lowe's or Home Depot. So that's something that you should definitely look into. Also, you can look on an app called Nextdoor, which basically is people in the area that have moving boxes or paper or bubble wrap that they don't necessarily wanna break down or get rid of, and yet you can actually get them from them on that app. Or also look on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. It's always a good place to find cheaper supplies than, than going to your normal retail moving store. Number three, appliances. Everybody always wants to know, you know, do I need to buy new appliances when I get into the house? Or, you know, are things gonna stay? So really, you know, depending on the situation and the real estate transaction, most of the time these appliances are gonna stay. You know, if the appliances are updated and you like them, maybe they're stainless steel or they go with, you know, the kind of the look of the kitchen, you know, don't necessarily have to replace them. I certainly would not buy appliances before you move and actually get into the house. Otherwise, you might not have the right size or it might not be truly what you want. So again, there's all sorts of ways that we can go about this. My recommendation is wait until you move into the house, see what's left or see what kind of style it is or if you're gonna change the look of your kitchen before actually buying new appliances. Number four, movers. So this is another topic that always comes up is do I move myself? Do I have family help move me? Do I hire movers? You know, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that question. However, what I would think about doing is depending on your budget or how you feel about driving a moving truck, there are actually companies out there that will come to your house, give you an evaluation of how much it's gonna cost for them to box everything up accordingly and to actually put it in a moving truck for you if you actually want to drive the moving truck yourself. So that's actually a pretty good option. I've actually done that before, and it's only been about a couple hundred dollars for somebody to come in, give me an evaluation, do all the boxing, load it nice and neat into 
the moving truck and then I actually drove uh, the truck myself when I moved. If that's not something that you wanna do or if you have a long cross country drive, there are moving companies out there that will go from state to state. And if you're just moving locally, there's plenty of movers here in the Columbus area uh, that do a really nice job that I, I, I recommend to my clients to use that'll, that'll definitely help you out and that are not that expensive compared to other cities in the region. All right, number five, short-term rentals. What I mean by that is we got everything packed up, we've already moved here or we're planning on move here and maybe we haven't found a house or a condo that we want to purchase yet or maybe we just don't know where we want to live in the city. So what you can do is look on Airbnb and look for you know, a monthly rental option. That'll give you a good idea of maybe where you want to spend some time at until you figure out exactly where you want to live. It also gives you a little flexibility that if you're in a rental and you know we find a house for you or a condo, you can get out of it relatively easy um, compared to a long-term rental option. If Airbnb doesn't work, there are a lot of local apartment complexes here that have uh, furnished apartments that you can do rentals as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Just because you move here doesn't mean that you have to purchase something the first week that you're here or you don't have to get into a long-term rental. If you don't wanna do that, there are plenty of options that allow you the flexibility so when you're ready to purchase a home or a condo, you have the ability to do so. Number six, daycare. This is always another hot topic that my clients are asking about that are moving here. Where's the best daycare at? Where is it located? How much does it cost? This is something that you wanna get taken care of before you even move here. So when you know that Columbus, Ohio is your next destination, start researching daycare facilities, uh, lining up Zoom calls with them, understanding what they're about, where they're located, how much it's gonna cost you each month, and then make sure that you get that booked before you even move here. Um, a lot of these places are already filled up and they're gonna be relatively hard to get into. So that's something that you definitely wanna get taken care of before you make your transition to Columbus. Number seven, probably the most important thing that you can do when moving or relocating to Columbus is to reach out to me so we can schedule a Zoom call and that's gonna allow us to get to know each other. I'm gonna be able to better understand what your goals are when moving to Columbus. On that call, we're gonna talk about the different types of neighborhoods, schools, what the city life is like, what the neighborhood life is like, you know, what areas to stay away from, what areas that are up and coming, all those different things we're gonna be able to talk about on this Zoom call and that's gonna give us a better idea of what you're looking for as far as housing when moving to Columbus. Now, some of you are gonna be ready to pull the trigger and buy something as soon as you get here. And if you're not, hey, that's okay. I have tons of clients that are six, seven, eight months out. And what we'll do is we'll set you up on a home search and that's gonna give you a really good understanding of what the areas that you're thinking about buying in are and what those houses kind of look like and sell for in that particular area. So I cannot stress this enough. When you're thinking about relocating or moving here, reach out to me so we can set up that Zoom call. All right, guys, there you have it. There are seven hacks to save you a ton of money when relocating to Columbus. If you're thinking about moving or relocating here, you have to get a hold of me. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me a DM on Instagram, throw up the bat signal, the smoke signal, whatever you gotta do to get a hold of me because I'm gonna have your back when moving to Columbus, Ohio. All right, guys, until next time, I'll catch you later.